Hello everyone, welcome to this Sims 3 house design video. So today we're here in Plymouth Isle building a family home on, what is this? I think this is lot 56, lot 56. So yes, there's a download link in the description. So if you want to download this house and place it in your own game in Plymouth Isle, you can do so and it goes on lot number 56. So yeah, there's also a map uh, linked in the description below that shows you what lot is what, so you know which lot is number 56. So anyway, uh, if you don't know, uh, Plymouth Isle is a world that I created from scratch, and there's a whole playlist on my channel you can check out, so I recommend you do that. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, I've already kind of done something interesting with the stairs. So this is actually the first time that I'm making, um, U, or I guess these are L-shaped stairs. I almost said U-shaped, that would be very wrong. They're not U-shaped, they're very clearly L-shaped. So yes, these are L-shaped stairs, so they kind of like go halfway up, it's like a little landing, turn, and go the other halfway, which I thought was pretty cool. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Again, it's like not complicated at all. You just kind of just, you know, use constraint for elevation, elevation, and you put, you know, like some stairs um, into the level above to like make the wall height a bit lower, and just have that on one point and kind of just remove the flooring around it, put some stairs in. It's not too complicated. And I've been wanting to do it for a while. And I started this house um, differently. I actually built, was building it on the lot next door. And like after I would spent like, I don't know, 40 minutes, I was like, oh, I kind of want to put these stairs in. But there was like absolutely no place to put them. I wasn't very happy with how the house looked. And I was like, I'm starting over. So I started over and immediately kind of designed the house around having these kind of stairs in them. So not in it, but, but well, in it, yeah. I said in them, I meant in the house. Anyway, that's not really important. So yeah, anyway, the house is, uh, I think three bedrooms and three, no, it's just one and a half bathrooms. Yeah, it's not a huge house uh, and it's built on, Lot number 56, which is kind of near the school, is it actually right next to the school? You can see it there, and it's it's right by all the other houses that have been building in Plymouth Isle. So you can kind of you can kind of see in this video all the other ones. You can see Huntington House and Sunrise Starter and Budget Bungalow. They're all kind of in this um, you know this little area here. So yeah, I just kind of like this little part of the world. But this is a pretty simple house. It's not constrained by any cost. Uh, I just kind of build it as I wanted, but I, I did want to keep the price lower. So the house ends up being under 75,000, which I know is still pretty expensive, but compared to the fact that the majority of my houses end up costing between 100 and 200,000, this was definitely on the lower end. And I did forget the yellow horse, so I'm sorry, but that, that kind of happened. But, you know, it, it's okay. I, I'll try not to forget in my, in my like, the, the builds I make after like this pre-recorded batch. So yeah, I know. Cause like, I remember, what was it? It was like Icelandic cottage, I think. I don't remember which one specifically, but I remember reading a comment. Someone was like, you know, you forgot the yellow horse. And I was like, yes, I did. And I keep forgetting it still. Ugh, I'm like, so not on brand anymore. But anyway, um, it's okay. Uh, it's, it'll be fine. Don't worry. Uh, anyway, this house has an interesting color scheme on the outside. It's something that I kind of wanted specifically, but I didn't end up keeping it entirely. I do change the roof, I think, to yellow, which is interesting. I don't know if I've ever used that roof color before. I could be wrong on that, though, but I don't remember using it anytime recently, so there is that. But the siding color stays kind of cream colored, and I do keep the trim green, so I did want to keep that. I thought it was kind of different because... I feel like a lot of my houses are just very similar color-wise, so I thought I'd branch out a little bit. And yeah, basically extending the back porch here, pretty simple. Um, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary, but you know, kind of using my column thing that I do where I kind of don't have foundation underneath the porches, but kind of have like the second set of columns that connects it to the ground. You can kind of see it. I do that quite often. I've been doing it for a while. I think it's just kind of something different and interesting. And you also may notice the siding uh, and the way that it kind of warps uh, around the stairs there on the corner. 
So I mean, of course, the easy solution to this is just to use wallpaper or like um, any kind of texture that has a vertical pattern. So you might notice by the garage door I used, like, or this whole garage area, I used this kind of green siding or paneling that's a vertical because otherwise you get that warping around the garage door because of the constrained floor elevation. I decided not to hide it by the stairwell in the back corner because it was like, it's the back corner of the house. I don't think it was too noticeable. And also because I didn't want, I thought I wanted the siding around like that main part of the house where the stairs are too. And I, I don't really want this weird patch of like vertical paneling there. I think that would look worse than just having it warp. So I'm just kind of embracing the warped um, texture on the wall. And you know, from the front, you don't really see it. So I, I don't think it's a huge deal, uh, but you know, if it bothers you, like excessively you can download the house and you can put vertical wallpaper on it so there you go but anyway um you can see here i was going to change the color scheme but i was like no i don't want to do that so i didn't do that i ended up um keeping it the yellow and green or the the um cream and green uh beige and green whatever you want to call it but yeah i do change the roof i was gonna go like red and i was like that could be interesting but yeah no i do change the color of the wall to just a slightly more um like more whitish color, it's a little bit less intense. Or do I? You know what? I might not. I feel like I do. I can't. I, we'll see. I can't remember entirely. I also love this tree. It's from Aurora Skies. It's really cool. I used a few plants, I think, from Aurora Skies. Or actually, like just that tree in one bush. But I think that. I don't know, these look really nice. So I'm just using some different kind of trees around here, some stuff I don't use as much in Plymouth Isle. Uh, but I think they kind of add. It adds something, uh, you know, to this lot. I think, and I do the landscaping, I think some of it now, I think some of it later. Actually, I might do all of it now. I don't really know for sure, but, you know, I guess we're all, you know, you're along for the ride with me, or I'm along for the ride with you. I guess that would make more sense. Anyway, uh, you can see putting in the driveway, it's kind of like worn. It's like these kind of pavers that are kind of worn, and then the front path is kind of this gravel that's also worn. I don't know, I thought it looked kind of interesting. And yeah, just putting in some bushes and plants and stuff. Again, the whole like worn thing is kind of just going along the theme of all the houses that I've been doing recently in Plymouth Isle, which is kind of more older houses that haven't been updated as much. So again, you'll see with especially the bathrooms in this house, they're going to be a little bit more colorful, uh, which is something I've been doing. Um, and I know that like for a long time, I've been like, I've, I would say, look at um, the houses that like Electronic Arts or the Sims team would do and they'd use like these absurd colors in the bathrooms and stuff and I'd be like this is horrendous and here I am doing some of it myself not all like not entirely all of it I do change the siding color there it is kind of doing a little bit of that and passing it off as being oh you know it's just 70s but it's, that's what I want so you know don't even don't worry about it I just, <laughs> I just think it's kind of interesting to have like these more colorful uh, bathrooms because like there are houses like that. It's not like I'm not going like ab absurdly wild like some of the, you know, houses that come with The Sims. Um, you know, some of them are like pretty, you know, off the rails, crazy in color wise or like pattern wise, that just like no one would do. But I feel like the stuff I do in these houses, you can imagine someone in the 70s being like, or in the 80s being like, yeah, this is great. This is the pinnacle of style, you know? Because I'm sure there are houses out there of that period that kind of have fixtures like this. It's so like the tile counters and like the kind of like greenish like appliances. I can just kind of see that uh, being of that era. And, you know, just you know, it's like they haven't updated it since then. I think it's kind of fun to do in houses that like aren't super modern or fancy to kind of have like, you know, this kind of older style, uh, like less, you know, a bit more dated style. I don't know why I feel like I need to, um, oh, what's the, um, no, I've forgotten the word, um, ju ju uh, justify, there it is. Slipped my mind for a moment. I hate when that happens when you're like trying to make, make a point and then the, word you need just disappears. But anyway, yeah, I'm not, I don't know why I'm trying to justify my use of color. I mean, I can do whatever I want. It's my house that I'm making, but you know, that's the thought process behind it. Anyway, um, you know, it's a little bit less bland, a little bit more fun. Anyway, moving on to the living room. Uh, so here I'm, you know, just getting in some wallpaper here. Uh, I like this wallpaper. It's from University Life. I think it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, you know, it kind of has this nice high, um, like wainscoting on it, like this like wood paneling part. I think it's kind of cool. Although yes, it does warp on the stair part. 
I know, it doesn't look great, uh, but I again, I didn't want to just use plain white walls because that's again, the only solution is to do vertical, like all vertical paneling or plain white walls. So I was like, you know, I'll just, I'll just deal with it. It's fine. It's okay. It's not the absolute end of the world, but it's not ideal. Anyway, you can see uh, up here, I like this kind of overlooking area that kind of looks down over the living room uh, where the stairs are, and I kind of thought this would be a nice like computer nook. So there's kind of an old computer there, and then some bookshelves, and uh, I think I put, I don't think I put a couch. I was going to, but I didn't end up doing that. Uh, you know, so it's kind of like this nice little extra area, um, you know, on the upstairs hallway, and you know, you have this kind of nice open ceiling, uh, not open ceiling, but this nice kind of open area uh, by the stairs, so it's kind of like this two-story ceiling area. It's a little bit more grand, and I think it's definitely more interesting than this normal staircase. I actually quite, I quite like it. I'm definitely gonna have to do some more interesting stairs in some of my um, future houses, like some U-shaped stairs maybe, you know, besides just the L shape, but it's still pretty cool, and I, I like it quite a bit. But anyway, we're doing the living room now, so I'm going to get out kind of an older TV, again, keeping in the theme that I'm trying to go with here. So, you know, trying to keep the cost down to an extent. And yeah, so here, putting in some curtains on the windows. One of that, that one there was giving me some trouble, but anyway, putting in some curtains, a nice bookshelf. There are lots of bookshelves in this house, actually. So if your Sims like to read, this is the house for them. Oh, also, we're like 11 minutes in to the video, and I realized I haven't addressed the name of the house. I usually do. Um, usually do talk about the name of the house. So this house is called Oxford Place, um, just because the road that I built it on uh, is called Oxford Road, or Oxford Street, or whatever. Um, of course, I named that too, but that was like done a while ago, a few months ago. So I was like, I don't know what to name this house. Oxford Place, because the road is on. That's great. What a creative name. But you know, it works out good. It's a nice name. It's very British sounding. Uh, or also New England sounding, because this is, you know, a New England themed island, so, you know, yeah, uh, and also, I know that, like, the very traditional, like, New England, or, like, even, I guess, like, New England island theme, like, Nantucket kind of theme that this whole island is based off of is having, like, sheet or shake houses, or sheet or sh uh, shingle houses, like, um, Huntington House, which is the first house build I did, uh, in this world, and there will be more of those coming. It's just, uh, I didn't want them all to be that way. It's, I feel like it's a bit generic after a while. So that's why this this one's siding. And it's a little bit more interesting colors, uh, color-wise with that green. But yeah, that's why, I guess. But anyway, we've done the living room and the dining room. And now we're going to move on to the bathroom. This is the downstairs bathroom. Uh, again, the color's brown. Brown and yellow, kind of. Or it's kind of beige. Brown and beige. And, you know, just a simple sink and toilet. Nothing too special in here, just a half bathroom. Uh, the washer and dryer will be in the garage, so yeah. Uh, there wasn't really room for a separate laundry room in this house. It also kind of a squeeze to fit three bedrooms in. You can see because of all the space that that staircase takes up with that open like area there by the landing, uh, there was that, I mean, you could probably fit another bedroom there if you designed the house differently. But, you know, as it is, it's a little cramped upstairs because I had to kind of split what I would probably normally make one bedroom into two uh, for the two single bedrooms or single bed bedrooms if that makes sense on the second floor because I did want this to be a three bedroom house I felt like two bedrooms was a bit small uh, like the one thing that I wasn't too happy about with Huntington House which was again the one I mentioned earlier that was the first build I did in Plymouth Isle I felt like it, you know being only two bedrooms wasn't enough for a house like that it would make more sense to be three so I wanted to have that for this house. So there is only one bathroom, unfortunately, only one full bathroom. Uh, so yeah, you know, there wasn't room for more than that, but it's okay. Uh, you know, it'll be fine, I'm sure. Um, you know, there's a half bathroom downstairs, and at least this way I was able to fit in three bedrooms. But yeah, and also all the bedrooms, of course, have closets, which is something I try to do uh, whenever possible is to put, I mean, of course, they serve no function, but they look realistic. I feel like it doesn't make sense not to have a closet because, like, pretty much every house has a closet in every bedroom. So, you know, I try to do that in The Sims as well, using those kind of um, clothes items from uh, Ambitions. But anyway, there's the green bathroom on the second floor, and here we're just, uh, I actually did the master bedroom while I was talking about something else. And here I'm doing uh, the kids' bedrooms. So, yeah, there's two kids' rooms up here. And uh, just choosing the colors here. I think one's blue and one's kind of orange there, so you can see. And yeah, I don't know what's happening at this moment. Just getting some lights, I guess. 
I don't know, changing the flooring there, that's fun. And, up oh, doing some under-roof stuff, yay. And the garage, yeah. Let's just put off those bedrooms for a second, and we'll do the garage instead. Why not? So anyway, here I'm in the garage, and uh, just doing some lighting, some lighting stuff, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to put a car in, because I think that was that would just be too expensive, so it's just the parking space. And I'm also going to have the washer dryer in here, and just a few other detail items. So there's the laundry machines, and uh, I'm also going to put in some blinds, I guess, because you know, why, why not, I suppose, it's, you know, you don't want, you know, people peering into your garage, you know, that's, ugh, who would want that, I don't know, anyway, whatever, so here, uh, putting in some tools and stuff, oh, there's a tool chest there, and actually that's it, so yay, that's the garage, fun, so uh, we're actually nearing the end of this video, not really, but, you know, there's, uh, what is it, four more minutes left, three more minutes, no, four, yeah, about four more minutes left, and so we're just going to do the two bedrooms. I think that's pretty much it. Some landscaping too, probably. So yeah, here I'm just putting in this bed, uh, in the, well, this bedroom, and just putting in some details, and not details, some furniture. I will be doing details though, so uh, look out for that. Uh, you know, so um, yeah, there's some posters on the walls. Actually, not really that many details, I guess. If you count that as detail, then whatever. Okay, whatever. So we're moving on now to this bedroom here. This is the other bedroom, so it's kind of more orange or reddish, and uh, has a four-poster bed. Very small, though. There's really not much room uh, in this bedroom for much things to happen, but that's okay. Uh, you know, there's going to be a dresser, I think. I put a dresser in the corner there. Yeah, I do. So, yeah, but not a lot of room for other stuff in this room. It's just going to be the main core elements that you need to make a bedroom. Of course, if you got rid of the closet, that would help quite a bit, but, you know, I like to have my detail, so whatever. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd check out some of the other house builds I have on my channel. There's also uh, my whole Creator World series you can check out. And uh, if you've liked, commented, or subscribed, I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And, yeah, so... Uh, we're pretty much wrapping it up here. Uh, we're just going to do a few more details, probably some outdoor lighting and that kind of stuff. I'm also doing uh, some terrain paint, of course, my dirt terrain paint that I like to do under all the plants and stuff to make it look more realistic, a bit of dead grass, you know, all that kind of stuff. And here's the outdoor lighting coming in, so some porch lights. I'll do some floor mats, you know, that sort of stuff. But yeah, so anyway, there's some screenshots coming up in a few moments. I hope you stick around for those. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope that, you know, you all have a great day. And I really hope to see you in the next video. Anyway, bye everyone. Goodbye.